Hi everybody, thanks for checking this video out. My name is Frank, I'm with Tiny Plastic Spacemen, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to disassemble and reassemble your Badger Extreme Patriot 105. Now this airbrush has come straight from my workbench, so you can see I've got a quick disconnect uh, adapter on there, uh, and that's pretty much it. So now we're going to take off the paint cup cap. You can see that uh, these are always very helpful. Good to have spares of these around. You might have a metal or a plastic one. This uh, basically prevents spills, uh, helps keep your paint from drying out too quickly, and it has a little hole there in the cap so it prevents any pressure buildup. Um, we've got a protective rubber cap that protects the needle, uh, especially while it's in transit or storage or just moving things around on your workbench. And you can see the needle there. Okay, so now just to do, we'll disassemble it down to what I call a, a basic clean. Um, what you would do for, say, an end of night sort of cleaning session. So the end of the airbrush, the back end of the airbrush comes right off. Uh, everything is just finger tight. Uh, there's no need to use pliers or any sort of tools at all, actually, for your general disassembly of your Badger airbrush. Okay, so now we're going to hold on to this here. I call it the trigger assembly, and we're going to just loosen the needle chuck screw um, just about a turn or so, and then pull the needle out, and we'll set that aside. So with the needle removed, we don't have to worry about anything else for the back end of the airbrush. Um, that is it for the general cleaning. Now we're going to take our attention to the front of the airbrush, and we've got these. Uh, there's essentially four pieces here. Um, I usually take off these two pieces with the threads uh, and the knurled pieces. I usually take those off as one, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to take them off individually. We've got the torpedo nozzle tip. Now that goes there. And then we've got the retainer for the nozzle. And that goes there. Okay, I just like to keep everything visually in line so I know which way I'm going to be uh, uh, taking them off and putting them back on. And now the nozzle is just held in place very loosely and it will almost just drop out. If it's dirty, uh, it will stick in there. No big deal. And so that will go there. The fourth piece is what's new on the Extreme Patriot is this rubber O-ring, or I should say a Teflon or PTFE O-ring. So that is it for your general cleaning. Um, this is what I, as far as I would usually take the airbrush down to for uh, cleaning at the end of a painting session. Uh, it just takes a few minutes and the more often you do it, uh, first of all, your airbrush stays clean, and uh, you also get quicker at it. So it only takes, at the end of a night, you know, a couple of minutes. If you have a really bad clog, um, you know, just uh, it, it might take you a little bit longer. So now if you need to do uh, a deep clean um, where you want to soak everything in cellulose thinners, for example, or give it uh, a good bath in a, uh, an ultrasonic cleaner, um, all you need to do is remove the trigger assembly here and it's deeply threaded inside the back of the airbrush body. So it takes several turns to get it out. There's lots of threads as you'll see. So there you go. And then we've got the high roller trigger comes out on its own and then the trigger back plate. Now this piece, uh, there are I believe there's one, two, three, four, five pieces in total. Uh, it's not really necessary to take it all apart unless this is just covered in paint. Um, if it is, mm, you take care of your airbrush a little bit better. But um, when you're putting this back in, just keep in mind that this is a D-shaped piece here. Okay, This hollow uh, needle chuck where the needle goes through. Um, so if it's turned slightly, you won't be able to, when you pull the trigger back, you won't be able to pull it back because it's turned in place. So you need to make sure that those D-shaped, the, the cutout in this large piece and this D-shaped piece here, you need to make sure they match so that you can pull on the string, uh, the spring. Okay? So what we're going to do is, in one of the other videos uh, for the Patriot, 
I show how to reinstall the uh, the trigger and the trigger backplate. I do normally do the trigger first and then the backplate, but I, in this example, I'm doing it uh, just backwards. You can do it whichever way is more comfortable for you. Now you'll notice that there is a lot of metal to metal contact, especially on the trigger. So that's where you can use the uh, the Badger needle juice, the Reg Dab needle juice, and just use that. It's a very good lubricant. Uh, to go on the trigger itself and also on the threads on the trigger itself on these threads in the front and uh, around the nozzle so now we're just going to thread in this piece we're just going to make sure that this is moving and we're just going to thread it in if you're careful you don't have to hold the needle uh, the trigger forward but you'll see as you look down into that opening there you'll see the that D-shaped piece start coming forward and make contact with the trigger back plate, which then it will move the trigger when, once the trigger's in, uh, the needle is in place. Okay? Now, um, let's say obviously we're saying that we've cleaned everything now, so we put everything on in the reverse order. So we've got the, the O-ring, and then we have the nozzle, and then the nozzle retainer, And then we have the nozzle tip. And if you're unsure about how uh, these threads go, you don't uh, obviously you don't want to cross thread anything. Just reverse, uh, turn everything leftwise or counterclockwise, anticlockwise, um, and you can feel and hear the click as the the initial threads meet up, and then you can thread it down. Generally, I haven't had any problem with uh, any cross-threading, though. Um, the brass components and the chrome plating work really well to help prevent that. Now we're just going to... well, we might need to loosen up the needle chuck a bit. And now we're just going to insert the needle, press down on that, press down on the trigger to make sure it's still centered over the air valve. And now we've got the needle come all the way forward. And to make sure it still uh, stays flush with the needle, of course you don't want it to uh, have any paint come out when you uh, press down just for air, just push on the back of the needle and then tighten that down. And then, once again, finger tight for the back end of the airbrush. And replace the cap and the protective cap. And there you go. That is the disassembly and reassembly of the Badger Extreme Patriot 105. So once again, this has been Frank with Tiny Plastic Spaceman. If you found this informative or helpful, please give us a like, subscribe, uh, check out the other videos that we've got in this disassembly and reassembly series. Um, plenty more uh, helpful videos like this in the YouTube channel, uh, so please check them out. Again, this has been Frank from Tiny Plastic Spaceman. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.